To serve great food is to create memories for your customers. But it takes more than luck. It takes consistency, creativity, and the drive to see things through. And every day, the stakes are high, which means it's time to stand up from your computer and start getting real. To own your kitchen is to own your bottom line. This is the real world. And now... This is the real world. And now... This is the real world. And now is the time to foodify your business. All right, everybody, welcome back to F Your Business Podcast. Back in the kitchen with Chef Chris. What do we got going on over there, Chris? Ah, uh, you hear that? That's the sound of some fresh peppers and onions being made. Wow, peppers and onions, what are we making? Oh, we're, we're going to do, uh, you know, 4th of July next week, so we're going to go hot dogs. And there's such a large variety of hot dogs out there that people probably aren't really aware of or think about that we're going to do some of my personal favorites. And some, you know, from the Philadelphia area of uh, hot dog combinations that people probably haven't thought of. Uh, that's going to be fun. I think it's going to be a cool one, a, a little bit different than what we've been doing on the podcast um, with fresh versus frozen. But we do have a couple varieties of hot dogs to choose from. Right. Right. So we're going to have fresh, and then we're going to have the cryback ones. So nothing's frozen, but the cryback compared to just the fresh that isn't cryback. That's the challenge. All right, so we got some different rolls I see here behind you. Um, again, I know a ton of different ingredients. Right. Yeah, well, we've got, we got the uh, potato rolls. we got the regular hot dog roll. we got some uh, uh, called hoagie rolls around here. And, you know, we're, we're going to make them up different. Some of our hot dogs we have fit on a hoagie roll. And that's, you know, one of the ones that you're going to make the hot dog with the uh, peppers and onions. So, you know, we got a couple different takes. We got the Philly take on a Texas Tommy that you're going to, you know, you're going to hear about later. So I, I think what we're doing is really exciting. Uh, it's a great lunch option for your menu. Uh, definitely great for a uh, kid's menu, what we're doing today. And the, the profit margins on this are amazing. And we'll get more into that later. Uh, that's awesome. I think uh, it's like a little hot dog eating contest here later, Chris. How many do you think you can have? Oh, I, I went to foul a dog night one time, and I definitely, uh, you know, it's a Phillies game, and I did 11. There's no way you felt great the next day after 11 hot dogs from a Phillies game. I didn't feel good for 11 days, <laughs> but I did 11. I'm yeah. pretty sure those hot dogs weren't as good as the ones you're going to be uh, making today. They're not, they're not. But I had in my mind when I went that I was going to do 10, no matter what. And I had, I had to outdo myself, so I went for 11. All right, well, we know the number you got to beat today. 11 is the number. That's not happening. <laughs> All right, Scott. So we're working on the hot dogs here. We got them on the grill. You can hear them sizzling away. Smell good. Smell very Smells good. great, right? Not like a hot dog. So I know you were looking up a little history of the hot dog. Now, it is one of your favorite food items. So what do we got? You know, a hot dog a little more unpredictable where where its roots have come from. So I think there's you know different stories. Well, is that because everybody wants to claim it? Yeah, pr it's so pretty good, much. That's why. <laughs> so I mean, some people are saying back to Frankfurt, Germany. You know, 1487, obviously named Frankfurter. I will go with that. I believe that one. Okay. Um, you know, there was in Germany in the 1600s as a you know a sausage what they were calling the Schand or a little dog, the translation. Um, you know, really started picking up at least for baseball in 1893. Um, actually, St. Louis was the first ballpark to add it to the, the menu. And then, um, you know, even some rumors or legends of how the hot dog kind of became what it is now. So, uh, you know, one of the stories, and experts are really not agreeing with this, or basically a hot dog vendor um, was giving customers out white gloves because the meat was so hot, but the customers weren't returning the gloves to the vendor, and he was losing a bunch of money that way. I don't understand, what's with the white gloves? Were they, were they uh, heat protected? I guess they were heat protected. I mean, this is way, way back. But just gave him no roll, just a, a hot dog? There was no roll, correct. So his brother was a baker and actually baked him a little roll for hot dogs. Right, this story's getting interesting. Yeah, again, not <laughs> sure. Experts are, are not going to you know go with that story, but that was one of the ones that kind of came. Sounds um, good, though. Sounds like that could happen. I like it. Yeah. So, you know, really 1890s um, in the U.S., 
Uh, it took off at the Columbian Expo in Chicago. It was a huge hit with the crowd. Obviously, it was delicious, right? Which we we agree. We agree. Affordable and easy to right. eat. Agree on all accounts. And, you know, mid 1890s, uh, Yale Record was the first to call it a hot dog in print. Um, basically, they were selling it in wagons outside of you know college students' dorm rooms. Um, 1916 was the first Coney Island hot dog eating contest. 1916. 1916. I guess Chestnut wasn't there. Not there, but he was there last year. He was. He was yes. the winner. 15, 15 wins now. 15 wins. Do you know? So will my 11 stand up? Your 11 would not stand up. Your, your 11 during a three-hour baseball game is not going to compare to his 10 <laughs> minutes. All right, so Chris, how many do you think he set a new record last year did he eat in 10 minutes last year of the contest? All right, so I was kind of watching it with one eye. I was, you know, having my barbecue and All everything. Right. So I want to say he got up in the 70s. Close. They Close. Do 69, a little short. 69? Uh, I think 63, I think, 63. last year. In 10 minutes, hot dog so, and yeah, rolls. Yeah, I know he was motoring through, but he's not eating like he used to. <laughs> he used to eat more. I think yeah, that's good. the most he had in the actual contest, but I believe you're right. Yeah. He has eaten 70 plus in not the famous contest, right. but other, but other so. ones. Yeah, yeah. So, so you got some you got some work to do to get your 11. Well, man, I'll start practicing today. In three hours, <laughs> up to you know 70 plus in 10 minutes. Look at that searing that hot dog. I don't think he was eating these kind of hot dogs. No, he wasn't. Right now, though, he would eat 125. <laughs> if it was these hot dogs, he ate 125 of them. I think they look good. I'm going to flip them over. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a nice serum. So I like how, you know, you can't see it, but uh, Chris, on these nice large hot dogs, slice them down the center, right? So tell tell me what you got going on with the, why do you come down the center over the nor normal, throw it in boiling water and let it just kind of sit? Well, this is one option, right? There's a lot of options to doing a hot dog. This is one. So this is the grill factor, you know, I like to call it. You know, anything you grill is better. Uh, so we sliced them over. We got the Dietz and Watson quarter pounders. We sliced them down the middle. We put them on the grill and we, and we let them sear up. Uh, you know, we're going to throw some and we're going to steam them. Okay. And we're going to see what people like better. So there's no real, you know, fresh versus frozen contest this week. It's more of a of a fresh versus uh, cryback. Really is all it is. But uh, and which way do you like it better? Do you prefer they prefer it grilled or do you prefer it steamed? Yeah. I like them both ways. But if I had my option, I would go with a grilled one. Yeah, I don't think you're going to go wrong either way. And I think I think you'll see when we start adding different toppings. Right. Some are going to fit better on certain versions of you cooking it, right? I guess, right, exactly. Right? Well, you know, I'm making a few different things here. Some of my childhood favorites from my neighborhood. Uh, you know, I was telling you guys earlier, when not doing this one. I wish I knew the recipe. But we had a place called uh, Texas Wieners. And they did a Greek-style hot dog. They would cut it down the middle, they put it on the flat top, they grill it, uh, and they put the Greek sauce over it. And the place always had a line, was always packed. It was the best hot dog I ever had. I used to go there often and get the Texas Tom, which is uh, cheese whiz, bacon, and the hot dog. Cooked the same way, cut down the middle, grilled on the fry top, on the flat top. And one day, I love pork roll. I said, hey, instead of bacon, why don't you put pork roll on that for me? So I ate it that way there, you know, a couple times a week for for a while, for a few months. And finally they took, they, they put it up on the menu of, of a Philly, Texas Tommy. And it was with the uh, pork roll. So I invented that. <laughs> so you heard it here. I'll tell you, Chris I'm going to invented that. I invented the, that. <laughs> the pork roll, Texas Tommy. Instead of bacon, well, yeah, we, we went with the uh, pork roll. And they sold a lot of them. I'll take claim to that. Wow, these hot dogs look good. Awesome. This episode is sponsored by the Largo Group. All right, so this is the week we are all set for hot dog challenge in honor of 4th of July, summertime. So, Chris, do you want to set the stage and tell us, tell us what was in the challenge? Yeah, so today we, we went with fresh hot dogs going up against prepackaged hot dogs, cryback hot dogs. They're both fresh, but well, one is you know set to last maybe 14 days where the pre-package is set to last two months so there's a little difference there but 
you know, they're both really good. I won't turn either one down. So uh, it was an interesting day today. Yeah. And what I love is, you know, for those of us who are not as much of a foodie myself, you know, when I serve a hot dog at a barbecue, it's just a hot dog with maybe some ketchup. Maybe we thought about some relish, like pretty much as far as we go. But I love all of the different variations that you provided. So can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah. So basically, I just went back to like what we do in the neighborhood, what we've done in my family growing up, which the mushroom is one of them. A lot of people never thought of putting a mushroom with a hot dog, but the flavor, they just go together. You know, they're delicious. So that's where I came up with that simple process to cook that. So if you're grilling outside, you you know, you get a tin foil, you put the mushrooms in it, salt, pepper, butter, little chopped garlic, and you throw it on the grill while you're cooking the hot dogs. It's no effort. You know, and, you know, if you're inside the restaurant, same thing, just throw it on the grill, cook it like that. It's, it's simple. You know, peppers and onions with the hot dogs, obviously a play off sausage and peppers, you know, but it goes with the hot dog just as well. <laughs> Definitely, you know, a few people ate them and really liked them. We also did a Texas Tommy, but it did it, you know, with a little twist. Instead of bacon, we used pork roll. You know, pork roll is a local item and that's why we like to use that. You know, I told a little story about that, how that's what I ate at one place and I kind of invented it. Wanted that instead of bacon. I wanted the pork roll. And after a while, they put it on the menu. Yeah. And then, you know, we did a Chicago hot dog minus the poppy seed bun, which we had a hard time getting here, you know, in the Philly area. And then I, I did a mustard and relish hot dog that nobody picked up. <laughs> nobody went for it. <laughs> Am I forgetting any? Oh, and I did that. One of my favorite is hot dog and eggs. You know, you can have it any time of the day, but I usually make it for breakfast on Saturday morning, Sunday morning, after a long night. And it just goes so well together. Nice. Cool. So what were some of the responses from the team? I think Chelsea has those. So definitely number one, the mushroom hot dog. I think that took everybody by surprise. Nobody ever had a hot dog with mushrooms on it. So everybody was very intrigued by it. And then once they taste it, they, I mean, just looking at the results, I mean, it's already there. Most people like the mushroom hot dog. I'll also say, too, um, so we broke it up into four. We did fresh grilled, fresh broiled, package grilled, and package boiled. And majority of the people in the office prefer their hot dogs to be more crispy. But, you know, we did have a few people who prefer like a more of a juicier hot dog. So you can clearly see the split in the room for the people who are like, if I'm eating a hot dog, it has to be crispier. It has to be burnt. They prefer, you know, grilled and fresh. It was, so it was, was fun. There too much of a taste difference did you find between the packaged and the fresh? Yeah, so, uh, and I think what everyone else was saying also is the one that was grilled, the fresh, you get more of a smoky flavor. When you boil it or steam it, um, we steam them, we don't boil them, kind of just over, you know, high heat, but not boiling. And you kind of do lose the some of the flavor when you when you steam or boil anything, you, you do lose flavor. So you lose some of that smokiness. But when it was grilled, that was the one thing I think most people are mentioning how smoky it was, the smoky flavor. Like we said, even like the pre-packaged, I think you get some of those other chemicals or something that's in there they have to put in. So I think when we got like the fresher hot dogs, you got more of that like sausage kind of flavor and you didn't really get all that other whatever else is in there in the package that keep, like Chris said, so it would last for a little bit longer of a time. No, I'm yeah. yeah. So what, what did it come down to cost-wise? Scott's got that. Yeah, so we broke it out. I mean, so like Chris said, the fun part of this was everybody could kind of choose different toppings, choose different hot dogs. Yeah. I mean, the, the top of the line when we had the quarter pound, you know, hot dogs or four ounces per were like 88 cents per actual just hot dog. So as you got into... um. The other hot dogs, and they were a little smaller in size. They had about 50 cents per, you know, anywhere between 50 and 62 cents. So once you kind of evened out the size, you definitely save money on the fresher hot dog compared to the, you know, frozen, frozen, I'm sorry, compared to the packaged one. Um, but I think when we really started digging into like you know, what each part of it cost, you know, to add peppers and onions might be like 25 cents or to add even a nice piece of pork roll, 40 cents. 
cheese whiz, 13 cents. Even an egg, we saw it last time, you know, like 13 cents for the egg. We, you know, we really saw that that's where as a restaurant is looking to put items on their menu, they can capitalize. Not that it doesn't matter to the hot dog, but I think when we were kind of, once we got past that, it was all the extra toppings and extra things that they could do with that hot dog that there's really almost no way to mess up the food cost part of it. It kind of have to hit, right, Chris? We were saying it's kind of a it's kind of a home run on food cost any way you look at it. Yeah, there's no way you, you're going to swing and take a miss on this one. Uh, it's a home run. You know, all said and done, even with the most expensive hot dog, you're a dollar ten in maybe. Right. You know, and with those nice quarter pound hot dogs, you easily sell them for five dollars, and that's you're underselling. Them. You know, yeah. I, I would definitely say six, seven, even eight dollars for those. Right. So it, the markup, the margins are crazy on it. It's a great item. You know, it's stuff you usually have in any way to make toppings with. And again, make it your own. Have fun with it. Do what is, you know, your local area. What are some of the things you have? Like we use pork roll. So we replace the bacon on a Texas Tommy. We're pork roll. You know, in Philly, we're big sausage and pepper people. We have stands all over the place selling them. So years ago, we start doing sausage and pepper hot dogs, you know, but it does make a difference if you're going to do that. The fresh do work better than than the prepackaged ones, and, and also the quarter pounders because it eats like a sandwich and not like a snack. Yeah, yeah, and I think sometimes people forget how much customers love hot dogs, I and mean, especially in the summer. Like, I think this would be a great you know LTO item for July or something because I think sometimes people shy away from the hot dog just because it seems like very kiddy. But it always amazes me how few restaurants actually have a hot dog even on their kids' meal. And I feel like my kids love a hot dog. <laughs> like It's going to be like the thing they pick every time. So I feel like, you know, sometimes as restaurants, it's like, it's okay to have fun. Like you said, offer something that's different, even if it's for July, because customers really do like hot dogs. Right. You know, like I said, you have all, the, all these items in your restaurant. It's just another way to use them. Right. Nothing's going to waste. You use them, you know, on the hot dog sandwiches. And it's an item that has a great margin. So, you know, and again, if you add it to your kids' menu, then it's just really helping your margins. So, I think uh, Americans consume 20 billion hot dogs a year. And so you're not far off to say that, yes, people want to eat hot dogs. There's no reason not to put them on there. And you even like a fun exercise like we did today, you know, bring your staff in. What do they want on a hot dog or what yeah. do they think might go on it? Like, you know, Chris will always use the word fun, like make it a fun thing for your establishment, for your restaurant. You know, maybe as the business owner, you're not the most creative in the kitchen. Well, that's okay. You probably have someone on your team, maybe front of the house, maybe back of the house that is creative and that could help design these. And like I said, these are all, you could do a list at LTO and and try these items off to what you have on the line already. There's really not much of purchasing problem to bring this stuff in. And, uh, and it's kind of fun. It's exciting. Put two hot dogs and chips and have a platter. Like there's so many options that you could, you could do with it. Yeah. And I think also from a marketing standpoint, like, you know, I think it's a great conversation starter and Chelsea took some great pictures. It's very colorful. You know, I mean, Chelsea, talk a little bit about like some of the marketing that you could do. around. I think especially having it as a limited offering, especially around July, it's a great opportunity, like Chris said, to get creative. I think even just from looking at the pictures that we post with it, you'll see that standard hot dog with the relish and the yellow mustard. And I promise you that was the only hot dog that was left on that plate. So hot dogs aren't just for kids, you know, especially when you think about summertime and if you have a beer, you want a hot dog. It's a great food pairing item, especially if you're, you know, hosting these baseball games or any other sporting events that you have going on. Yeah. And I think try it with your customers. I mean, see, you know, but I think, uh, you know, like I would say, I, we volunteer for our local baseball and you will be amazed at the line that forms when the hot dogs go on the little spinny thing. And they're not the best hot dogs. Yet. Right. Grand adults are in line to get the hot dog for three bucks. So I think if you actually did any of the ones in Chris's picture, they probably are going to be way better than those. Oh, like Chelsea said, I'm talking about the breweries that are maybe don't have food. You know, again, back to we've talked about a few times on the podcast is adding something simple that will keep them there, you know, having another beer or coming there maybe a night that they were, they normally wouldn't have come there because they were hungry also and they chose somewhere else. So I think that's, you know, another reason for something easy, 
anyone can do, get it on the menu, you know, not only profits on that item, but on your other items that you're selling. And also that's an item that holds great on your steam table. If you want to prepare them ahead of time and put them on the steam table, they hold great. You know, I won't say hold them there all day to our limit, but uh, they actually, they really do. They actually get better as they sit there. Oh, so always what's, get uh, what's your favorite hot dog? Like, I guess, Chris, what's mm-hmm. like your ultimate, if you're going to have a hot dog, What's it going to have on it? Place, but it's good to have that. I have a few favorites, but my yeah. ultimate favorite is is the Texas Tommy with the pork roll. Okay. You know, yeah. oh, yeah, what about you? Yeah. With Chris, I do like the traditional Texas Tommy, though, with bacon. Also, because I don't eat ketchup or mustard, so I don't want them anywhere near my hot dog. <laughs> so that, you know, some some cheese and some bacon sort of, you know, I'll trade those for that. What about you, Chelsea? I'd have to say the peppers and onions. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. I'm with Scott. I'm not a huge like ketchup and mustard person, but the peppers and onions are, they look amazing. You know, if you use peppers and onions, you don't need condiments on that. <laughs> <laughs> it had plenty of flavor. It had plenty of flavor. And, and, you know, I'm back to, we always kind of bring the loop around is, you know, look who else is doing it. There's a reason why Costco is leaving the hot dog and soda on their menu for a dollar 50. It's, it's a, it's easy. Uh, it's, you know, B, it's it's great food cost, even at a dollar fifty. Trust me, they're not losing any money on it. I'll give you a better one. Dollar dog night. <laughs> People <laughs> flock to the stadium. It's dollar dog night. We gotta go. They go crazy <laughs> for dollar dog night. Yeah. And, yeah. and they're still making money on that. You know, not okay. you're probably making 20 cents a hot dog, but they're selling 10 billion of them. <laughs> Oh, that's how that's how we get to twenty billion a year is a couple a couple dollar dog nights. You gotta have a dollar dog night to hit that number. <laughs> yeah. I, I definitely agree with that though. Yeah. Well, that's so cool. So I guess you know, big takeaway is not to be afraid of the hot dog. You know, definitely check out ways to elevate the hot dog. And, you know, not be afraid of the limited time offerings. But I think looking ahead at, you know, what holidays are coming up and pretty much hot dog you go all the way through labor day you know maybe it's a couple weeks or a week or something to create urgency too to say you know we added this for one week or like scott said here's our favorite hot dog of the week or something that shows people that this isn't forever i think it's a great you know conversation starter and way to freshen up your menu during this time of year this is the time to do it that's for sure yeah outdoor bars during happy hour right i mean there is so many different options to do with it and like I said, there's no better time than really from you know memorial day july 4th to labor day that that's the time you know that's the time to try it so hope you're listening to our podcast now so you can get it get on your your menu asap yeah and i would say as an added challenge you know please send us a picture of you know a unique hot dog that you come up with or you know toppings that your customers love like we would love to see you know, some feedback of some fun ways to, to elevate the hot dog. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to this episode. And we're really excited for you to be part of our F Your Business Man. This podcast is sponsored by the Largo Group. Thanks for joining us this week on F Your Business Podcast. Whether you're a restaurant owner, chef, brewery owner, or bartender, we believe everyone in the hospitality industry deserves access to the knowledge and tools they need to succeed. Be sure to visit our website, fyourbusinessmovement.com, to subscribe to the podcast and stay up to date on current offerings.